Jordan one more time, coming at you, going over Darren Hancock, taking it strong to the hole. And then Michael and Alonzo Mourning sharing pleasantries. More on that in just a couple of minutes. The final was 103 to 80. The Bulls over the Charlotte Hornets. Michael, 25 points, six rebounds, four assists, four steals, and a good idea. He said he'd guard Muggsy Bogues. It was one of those suggestions I came up with the practice that I thought um, it, was, it would give us a little bit more uh, rebounding, you know, because Muggsy doesn't go to the offensive board, so you know, I just run back and help out on the boards. Uh, and also gave me an opportunity to help out on the defensive end in terms of double team and double team with a bigger guy. Uh, you know, I was able to get a lot of steals, knock the ball away. You know, and we we stuck with it pretty much the game because they really didn't uh, didn't they didn't know how to counter that. Another key for the guys from Chicago, they held Alonzo Mourning to 13 points, two out of nine shooting. Craig Sager talked to Scotty Pippen about that. But what did you see tonight, particularly the job defensively you guys did on Alonzo Mourning? That gives you some confidence in game four. Well, we, we, we're making him give the ball up. You know, either he's going to give the ball up or he's going to try to score against the whole team. And, uh, you know, that works to our advantage when he tries to beat the double team. He was trying to end the game on a good note, but he was getting definitely frustrated out there. What were you guys yakking about? Well, he was just yakking as always. You know, that's, that's Alonzo's style of play, to, to run his mouth and try to in, intimidate you with that. But uh, you know, we, we've been through those stages of the game before. And, you know, our play speaks for ourselves. Could be a team on a mission, Mr. Richmond. What do you think of the Bulls' chances? Well, I told you, any time they have Michael Jordan on their team, uh, they're going to be a great basketball team. And Scottie Pippen has been playing an all-star year, so they, they have a great group of guys that can get him there. It was at the old Chicago Stadium, affectionately known as the Madhouse of Madison, where Michael Jordan first earned his NBA reputation. Built in 1929, it is literally being torn down as we speak. Although it was a wonderful arena in which to showcase your talents, with no elevators, no escalators, and only 16 restrooms, it was severely outdated. We will never say goodbye to the memories. The Bulls only hope that they can add to those memories and winning seasons across the street at the new United Center, affectionately known as the house that Jordan built. Thanks, Craig. It's the house that Jordan's not been comfortable in shooting the basketball. He is two for three tonight, however, in Chicago leading 10-7. The Hornets lead by one. We've talked a lot about changing courts and different baskets and how it shouldn't affect you, but psychologically it does. Michael Jordan says he does not feel as comfortable in this building, but he has done something about it. He has taken the chair that he used for nine years at the old stadium and brought it out of storage. He used it for the first time in the final regular season game here at home. The only home game since his return in which he shot 50% in this building. Bob? <laughs> That'll probably be for sale at and some uh, collectibles place for about, oh, 2,500 bucks. And you tell me that even the greatest players in the world aren't superstitious? <laughs> Mike's chair. Look what my, the back of my seat says. It says Bob's chair. There you, go. I mean, you should feel very honored that you and Michael both had your chairs labeled in the new United Center. Thank you very much, Doug. It's, uh, it's really an honor having you recognize me for that, too. Larry Johnson penetrates inside. Morning has it stripped. Seven. 41-37 Chicago. Morning defended by Longley. Jordan came over for the double team. Out of bounds. Charlotte Ball, nine on the clock. This is one of the least inspired halves I've seen from Alonzo Morning. I've done a lot yeah. of his games over the last few years. He is really struggling to get himself going. I guess you have to give a lot of credit to Chicago. Alonzo's a very emotional player. Right now, he's not playing that emotion that we normally see in him. They have a seven-point lead, and they have to feel great about what they've been able to do with Alonzo Morning. Here in Morning and Pippen, is it going to be a double foul? If so, it'll be three on both of them. Scotty just cannot make that play. And nor can Morning. That's three now on both of these players. And that's the story. See, Scotty goes out of the game at 2-12. Let's watch Morning and Pippen both get locked up. It's a double foul. And Scotty goes into the game with like 18 seconds to go for the last possession. Phil saying, I'll be able to at least hide in here because we're not going to have to play any defense. And on a made free throw, they both get their third. 18 seconds. For Muggsy Bo. And the morning again. They have to kick it back out. Back to morning again. Got a better position this time. Lost the ball. Another Alonzo morning turnover. 
Open is two, coach. He was fouled by Muggsy Bogues. Okay, Alonzo Mourning never got back down the floor. He got tied up with Scotty Pippen when he spun. And right now, Charlotte's going to have to do some things to try to get Alonzo the ball where he's not getting three players on him. Look at this. you got Michael Strippen. you got Longley there. you got Pippen in his lap because Wingate and Muggsy Bogues are on that same side of the floor and the Bulls are totally collapsed off those people. And Coach for Charlotte used to call them when he was at Chicago, the Dobermans. Well named. 9.06 to go, third quarter. 58, 44, Chicago on the verge of blowing this thing open. Michael! Go on a 19 to 4 run. Morning, once again bothered by Jordan, but he gets the hook to fall. That's only his second field goal. Morning, two of seven. Looking for Morning against Longley. There's that quick double team. See, they're going to leave Bogues open. Absolutely, Michael's going to go back. He's going to double team. Jordan is just just driving him crazy. I'll tell you what's happened with Muggsy Bogues entering the ball into the post. Michael's going to be the guy who will double back. If they bring Hersey Hawkins in to double the post, then Michael will double from across the floor. So whatever they do, they're going to have Michael be their wild card and their doubler. And at 6'6", he comes back there and can disrupt your post player. Morning with four on the shot clock. 7-2 Luke Longley. Jordan runs at him. The shot clock violation. Chicago ball. The fans at the United Center love the defense. They have totally frustrated Alonzo Morning. He cannot get loose. Remember, Mike, or, uh, Bob, I've told you the story. When Michael was in his second year playing for me, he blocked over 100 shots and had over 200 steals and was the defensive player of the year. You know, they played the last regular season game there, but the Celtic ghost seemed not to want to let the building go away as their team remains in the playoffs, tied at one with Orlando. And we have a timeout on the floor. 9.45 to go in the game. 84-60, Chicago. All you want to say, but all you're doing if you're Seattle, say, let's get the game started. We do not want to hear for the next two days what went on last year. But you know what? Until they get past that first round, they're going to always hear about it. Jordan and Hawkins exchanging a few words. Now morning talking to Michael. Did Michael get a technical? Michael threw Percy Hawkins down. Now a few words for Alonzo. I got a feeling Alonzo's not in a great mood, Michael. See, I like Alonzo doing this. I don't want him to go back and smile at Michael Jordan. He doesn't need to smile because Michael's stealing his lunch money right now. Yeah. It's like you smile when the series is over. Don't let Michael con you into being his buddy. Oh, and we have seen that. Oh, hey, you know. Uh, Jordan throws Percy Hawkins down. Oh, he oh, hit him right with an elbow. Play. He got him up with an elbow. Yeah. Michael, people don't realize Michael's vicious competitor, uh, competitor in that post. He's not gonna, he's not gonna give anything. He'll crack you upside the head before anybody in this league. I'm not saying dirty by any stretch of imagination, but you gotta be ready to take some punishment against him. This is a reaction by Hersey Hawkins, and he takes it out on Steve Kerr. <laughs> Kerr says, "Whoa!" It's called displaced anger, Bob. <laughs> I like that displaced anger. And flopping by Steve Kerr. He oh, gets yeah, the Emmy yeah. now two thumbs down. Absolutely. So with Collins and Neal. Now a technical foul on Hawkins, who's still angry. There's Cisco. Give us the thumbs up or down there, King. See, Michael looked over at me and winked. I know him like a book. I'm telling you, he is <laughs> absolutely... Look at him talking to Alonzo right now, too. And he's got the... Hornets oh, yeah. talking to themselves. Oh, yeah. He, you know what? He's that guy that makes you a little tougher than you are by yourself. You know, we've told the story so many times. It was in the great column by Bob Verdi today, by the way, the Chicago Tribune, about you returning to coaching. Uh, congratulations on that. I know people, your mind does not shut off. Larry Johnson got away with an elbow. Gets the shot up. Running can't get the shot off. Tempers are flaring. Morning smiling, though. He knows that this is not the time to... See, I think if I'm up. Alan Bristow, I, I know he wants... I, I know what he's thinking. I need to get Alonzo a good feeling about finishing this game. Morning staying in there, and Purdue got his hands out on Morning. See, Alonzo got a technical, yeah. and that's what I'm talking about. Alan, get him out of the game right now. See, Will Purdue gave him a little shot in the back, and Alonzo Morning's not going to step away from that. He's, he's too competitive. Right. I, I wouldn't want to be dealing with Alonzo Morning. 
My I wouldn't want to be dealing with him after the ball game. See, so act like he was going to throw the ball. Will, that's all frustration. Now, you know, the worst part from, uh, for uh, Charlotte, they've got to be in Chicago for two days and read about how awful they were. That is the worst feeling in the world when you're on the road and they start talking about I remember a few years ago, Cleveland came into Chicago when they had Doherty and Price and, and everybody and lost the first game by about 27 points and all they heard about was how, mar how they were marshmallows for about three days.